G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're covering how to set parameters uh, using formulas in families using Dynamo. So previously, um, actually my second video I made on this channel, which is a fairly popular one so far, is how to add shared parameters to families using Dynamo. Uh, but I had a few comments and a few messages from users saying, but how do you set parameter values after this? So we want to automate as much as possible. Um, so I'm going to show you today one technique you can use, and some future videos will look at other options as well. Um, so you may recall if you've seen the video that we basically added a set of authoring fields and a set of coding fields to a family um, with a one touch script. So we just press a button and it goes and pulls in these eight parameters and adds them to our family for us in the right parameter group. Um, but from there, I want to go and apply a formula to some of my fields. So today we're going to focus on these five authoring fields. Essentially, it's telling me which company made it, which day it was made, which day it was changed, which version of Revit it was made in, and who made it. So these are all things that can be driven by a formula, except for the date that it was modified. But essentially, when a family is first created, you can lock this down with a formula under the assumption that the next time someone comes to work on this family, they'll unlock that formula and add a date. If they don't, well, they don't, but that's users for you. None of them are perfect. Um, so anyway, we're using some custom nodes today. Uh, we're using two from Clockwork uh, for Dynamo 2.x. Um, one basically extracts all the data about Revit from the active application, and the other one extracts the name of the user who's running the script. Um, so this is how we're going to obtain some of that information to set. And then we're using Orchid for Dynamo 2x um, to set the formulas in our family, and also to extract the current document in a way that Orchid can understand. So Orchid's a little bit complicated to install. If you haven't got it at the moment, you can't just install it from the package manager like any other package in Dynamo. You actually have to go to the GitHub where it's located. Um, I'll just quickly show you how you can go about that. So if you go to the website for Orchid, um, so it's basically Air Fajo, Orchid for Dynamo. Um, Air Fajo is the author. Um, he's done a lot of great work with Dynamo. Um, you'll need to first go to Orchid 200 if you're in Dynamo 2.0. Uh, 21, 21.0 if you're in Revit 2020 using Revit 2.1. And 130 if you're in a build of 1.3, such as 1.3.4. Let's say we're in 2.0.3. So in this folder, there should be a, an EXE that you can download, um, which is what you'll use to install Orchid initially. Um, so, actually, sorry, not under 200, it's under builds, there's a subfolder called builds. Looks like the GitHub's being a little bit slow. So if I jump in the builds folder, these are basically the EXEs respectively of which version you should install. And there's also a folder called Orchid samples, which you'll need to download. And basically once you've installed Orchid, um, you need to reopen Dynamo and open one of the sample projects. And that will essentially activate Orchid on your computer. Um, and from then you can use it like any old custom package. Um, so I think basically the author just got sick of seeing their code copied and pasted and changed and messed up. Um, and people were assuming that it was his package that was the, the blame. So he just said, I'm gonna package it all in one thing. And this way people can't just steal bits and pieces and muck around with them. And it was a good choice, I think. Anyway, so we'll just jump back to the presentation briefly. Um, actually, sorry, we'll go back to Dynamo. <laughs> so without further ado, let's actually build a script that can do this. So we're using Dynamo 2.0.3 today for anyone following along at home. I recommend at least using 2.0.2 .2 if you can. This may work in 1.3.4, not sure. I haven't built this in 1.3.4 before. Do it at your own risk. Um, so we've got Orchid here at the moment. And we also have Clockwork as well in our custom packages. But anyway, the first thing we're gonna do in our script is we're gonna get the date. So we're going to get the date time today. And that will basically give us a date time. So we can see that it's the 20th of July, 2019. Um, so what we're going to do is actually turn this into a date time format because we want it to be a consistent format. And sometimes computers can get different date time formats as well. So it's good to use a, a format node whenever you use a date time. And the format we're going to use is just uh, the day, the month, the year. So DD, MM in capitals, and YY, lowercase. And what our output should be is a consistent uh, date, month, year, regardless of the system settings, if whoever's running the computer. So it's really important to process that. Um, so from there, we're going to go and get a few other fields. So we're going to get the username. So we're going to look for system username. And there's, there's a custom node from Clockwork here. And basically what this node does is it gives the name of whoever's running this computer. 
So usually in most organizations, this will relate to the person's actual name or it can be tracked back to that person. So it's usually appropriate to use this as the name. We're also gonna take the name of the company who's doing it. In this case, um, it's probably always gonna be the same because you're just running this as the company. So let's just call my company Aussie Boom Guru. This way, whenever someone runs this script, it's gonna add this in the formula. We need also the version of Revit that we're using as well. So we're gonna look up application version, which again should give us a clockwork node. And this is a really great, really great node. It actually um, gives you a lot of information about what version of Revit we're using, such as the language, the build, the name. Usually what I just get is the full version. So 2019.2 is probably sufficient. Um, and now what we really need to do is just bring all this information together in a list. So what I'm gonna do is just make a code block and I'm gonna close my brackets and we're just gonna get all our data. So authoring company, um, it doesn't really matter what you call these. We're just making variables essentially. Um, we're gonna say authoring user, uh, the date created, date modified and the Revit version. And we basically get a collector to build a list. So we're just gonna feed those values all in here. And for now, we'll just make date created and date modified the same parameter. So it's being made the first time someone runs a script and from then people are probably manually updating the date modified. So that will give us a list of all that information that we want to set. And from here, we just need to get the, the names of the parameters um, as they stand. So I've actually got the original parameters that we have here. So I can just copy these into a list essentially. So we're going to company. So I'll just make another code block. And I'll just put these in one at a time. So we have our authoring company, our authoring user. There are probably other ways you could extract this data. It's just that you want to make sure that whatever parameters you're putting in here are in the order of the parameters that you're collecting. So it's probably quite hard to automate how this script would know what those parameters are, unless you explicitly tell it, these are the parameters you need to get. Cool, and just the version of Revit. Great. And our last script, if you recall, actually already set these parameters up in the family. Um, so this should really easily close off the script. At the moment, there's a closed bracket that's expected. I think I've missed the missed bracket somewhere. Okay, I've got something missing here. Interesting. So somewhere in here I've missed out a... Oh, I'm making a list. They need to be commas, sorry, not semicolons. You'll know that I usually keep my errors in my videos so you can see common mistakes. Great, so that should be our list of parameters as well. Okay, so now we all, all we need to do is really feed these in, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our formulas in um, double apostrophes because that's how formulas are set in Revit. So we need to add double apostrophes either side of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a field called list map. And we're gonna use this in order to add apostrophes to the front and the back. Um, there's two ways we can do this. We can do that with a concatenate. So a string concatenate. And we wanna con concatenate uh, a double apostrophe on the front and the back. And that's our function. So when we run this, it should apply it to each element. See, now they're in double apostrophes. I think you can also just write the formula um, x plus y plus x, and x is double apostrophes, y is the element. I'm not sure if that gives the same outcome. Yeah, that gives the same outcome as well. So that's a little bit simpler, actually. Let's just do that. And then x will just be that string for the double apostrophe. That's a much smoother way of doing it. I like to minimize the amount of things you have to do. Um, note that we're calling out the same variable on both sides. That's why it only calls out X once because we're setting X twice. Okay, so now we need a node from Orchid, which is formula set. And basically this will look for the family document, which parameter and which value. So the document we want is the current document. And in this one, we're gonna use Orchid's current document node because Orchid interacts with that one the best. It understands it better than the native Revit active, active document node. I found sometimes it won't 
always work with the out of the box one. So we're going to feed that in as our current document, our parameter name, and our values. And really, all, that, that should do it. Um, what we'll do is we'll just add a watch on here as well, because we're going to set this up for Dynamo Player as well, just in case someone wants to run it through Dynamo Player. And basically, that's our output. And the only input we really need is this, the, 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 who, the, who the company is, just in case there's maybe two companies in your organization and they need to go and change the company field before they run the script. So we just have one input and one output. That's pretty much it. Okay. So I'll just save this. Great. Okay. Um, so I'll just test it before I run it out of Dynamo Player as well. So we have a family here. I've already set these before, but what I can do is just undo that step. Or I can just clear these. Clear these. Cool. Okay, so we have fields, but they haven't been set. So if we run this, we should expect it's going to find those parameters and it's going to set them as well. So we'll run. It looks like it's worked. Formula is set. Uh, we need to set this to longest lacing. Because there's only one family document, it's going to shortest lacing. So it's only doing it for the very first value. So we need to go longest lacing. So I'll just undo that, make sure that these are all clear first. Okay, we'll try again. See, now we get the five because it runs it across the family document. It finds the, the longest list and it repeats all the shortest items. Really important, that step. Um, and there you go, you can see that it's found all our fields, it knows what the date is, it knows my username, and it knows the version of Revit that we've built this in. So really powerful. But what we'll do instead is we'll just save this and we'll run this through Dynamo Player. Uh, just so we can do the full workflow um, from adding the parameters to setting the parameters with formulas as well. Okay, so we've got a, um, a family here for demonstration. So currently the family has no parameters. And obviously, because it has no parameters, none of them are populated with formulas. So we're going to run the script we built in my second video on my channel, which is just to add the parameters. Um, this one's relatively straightforward. You can see it's just added five parameters to the authoring fields and three to the ident identity data. The one we've just built is what's going to populate these five fields. So we're just going to run that. We could go to the inputs if we wanted to as well and run it out of Dynamo Player just to change the company name. But for now, we'll just run it. And there you go, you can see that we've populated that with five parameters. Um, so that's pretty much proof of concept. Um, that's how quick it is to run. And obviously you can build a little toolbox um, that you can run successive scripts in. We've, you can see we've just ran two in succession um, and we saved a lot of time by doing that. So that's pretty much it. Um, but be aware that Orchid is a really great custom package that has a lot of capabilities to interact with families, family types and parameters. Um, you can just see some of the functions I've listed here that are possible. And I'm definitely going to do some more videos on how you can utilize these. So the two that I'm thinking of are how to do family type creation, um, either from Excel or I'll think of another method possibly you can use, such as generating two lists um, using text. Um, and the other one being to set family parameter values using Excel. So generating a type catalog outside of Dynamo and pushing those values in and processing them into the family types themselves. Um, but that's pretty much all for today. So hopefully that helps answer a few questions I've had from other people on how this workflow works um, and gives you some more ideas of what you can do with Orchid yourself. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And thanks for watching today and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.